double-breasted jackets. We're going to talk about what goes into the design and the construction of a double-breasted jacket. More specifically, we're going to talk about what we considered or what elements we considered when designing our Askoki double-breasted drape coat. I am your host, Prof, also known as the King of Drape. Welcome to Askoki, and let's get right into it. Now to my right, I have a mannequin who we also call Jimmy here in Studio One. And draped over Jimmy is the prototype of our Askoki double-breasted drape coat. We're going to start from the top and look at all the design elements and walk our way all the way to the bottom. Now, what is a double-breasted jacket? A double-breasted jacket is what I have on. It basically is a jacket that has both quarters overlapping one another or each other. Just like we have here on the mannequin, you have two quarters overlapping each other. Let's start from the top. A double-breasted jacket is a very imposing or can be a very stylistic. It's a statement coat. In the, and that is how it differs primarily from a single-breasted jacket. It makes a statement. Um, and one needs to think about what are the key elements or what elements do you want to accentuate when designing uh, a double-breasted jacket. The shoulders, for one, because it's such a masculine garment, it basically defines or sort of expresses or exudes masculinity. So starting from the shoulders, typically we like to extend the shoulders to give you that broad frame at the top. And so if you look at the shoulders, they're very wide and extended. Start with very wide structured extended shoulders. Of course, you can go for, sh uh, for soft shoulders, but for this cut specifically, we've gone for extended shoulders just to give you that structure and presence in the shoulder, which is where really everything starts. For any jacket at all, uh, you have to get the shoulders right. If you don't get it right, then nothing else flows. So extended shoulders and then coming down to the lapels. The lapels are another defining feature of a double-breasted jacket. Why? because it exudes again that presence, that masculinity. And so when designing a coat, you have to sort of figure out what are the right proportions you want to achieve. Is the wearer going to be a tall person or a shorter person or a slim person or a more rotund person? These are all things that you have to think about when designing the lapel, which is I would say the most defining element of a double-breasted jacket. Now, let's say for instance, or sort of a rule of thumb, for shorter individuals, using what I'm wearing as an example, you want a longer lapel line, a long sweeping lapel line, which gives you an illusion of height. So, for instance, look at this jacket. If I buttoned it at the lower button, it gives you a longer lapel line and it elongates the figure. So if you're a shorter or, or more diminutive gentleman, you certainly want to go for a longer sweeping lapel line or a six by one double-breasted cut. What I have is a four by two. The six by one or four by one would have you buttoning the jacket at the lower button to give you this longer lapel line. If you have the, let's say, gift of being taller, then you can afford to do both. You can either sort of have a longer lapel line or you can have a shorter lapel line by using your waist button as the anchor for the lapel. Here, we've gone for sort of a higher lapel line. Now, that doesn't mean more diminutive individuals or men or women, for that matter, can't wear this. One just has to gauge and judge the proportion and make sure that you, uh, it is consistent with the wearer's uh, morphology or physique. So again, the lapel is a critical, very, very critical and defining design factor in your double-breasted jacket. Here, 
what we've gone for is an imposing look. I wanted to create something that delivered a punch, something that basically sort of expressed presence. In my own words, I remember when I was designing this, this jacket, I wanted a coat where when one walked into a room, you got noticed. Basically, you owned your environment. And so the garment had to be designed such that it had presence. And the lapel is exactly what gives you that. So the lapels here are broad, quite broad. This is quite a wide lapel, um, about 10 inches across, actually. Um, the one I have on is about six inches or five and a half inches. So this is a pretty wide lapel. Another thing to bear in mind is most double-breasted jackets in the design have the lapels pointing upwards towards the shoulder, such as the one I have on. That is a traditional way to do it, with the lapels pointing towards the top of the shoulder. Now, what we've done here is something slightly different. We have the lapels horizontal, pointing towards the arm, and that is on purpose. And the reason we've done that is that that combined with the breadth of the lapel just sort of makes the jacket that much more imposing. And so two things with the lapel, one is the width and the angle of the notch or the angle of the peak of the lapel. So the traditional way to do it obviously is the lapel pointing upwards towards your shoulder. But here we have it pointing parallel to your arm. So that is a defining feature here. Going further down, of course, we've talked about the drape in all our jackets. Similarly, we've built in a lot of drape into the chest of this double-breasted jacket. And drape matters so much more for the double-breasted jacket because it's such a masculine garment. And so when you have that additional cloth, or room in the chest. It gives you sort of that illusion of size in the chest, much more so than a single-breasted jacket. So for the double-breasted jacket, um, if you're building one or designing one or having one made, you might want to consider having a lot of drape in the chest, a lot of drape, meaning a lot of excess cloth in the chest to accentuate sort of that presence. So again, coming down here, we've built a lot of drape into the chest. Now, coming down to the waist, another critical design factor. Uh, I talk about this all the time, about the archetypical uh, figure, the Greek uh, figure, uh, broad shoulders, pronounced chest, and a narrow waist. So with the double-breasted jacket, similarly, you want that suppression in the waist. Just ever so slight suppre suppression in the waist, which you can see uh, from this mannequin. It's got this nicely suppressed waist. And again, it just sort of, what that does is that it even further accentuates the width in the shoulder and this bloom or the drape in the chest. So the waist, again, you want it sort of not, ex not extremely pinched, not excessively so, but you want it to, you, you want to basically have it nipped, just a slight nip in the waist to, to give you that shape that essentially accentuates the width in the shoulder and that drape in the chest. Coming further down, um, the positioning of the pockets. This is another critical one. Uh, a lot of tailors differ on this, and I remember going back and forth uh, on this. I have a rule of thumb that the pocket should line up with the bottom button of the coat. For instance, here we have the button button here marked in red and it lines up with the pocket. It's not exactly so on the jacket I have on because this was made by my Italian tailor, by my Neapolitan tailor, and they have their own rules or rules of thumb when, de when, when cutting uh, their jackets. And so, as you can see here, the bottom button is slightly lower than the pocket line. But for our own Askoki design, I thought it looked just more streamlined. It looks just cleaner 
uh, I'm all about streamlines and, and perpendicular lines. And I thought that the bottom button lining up with the pocket just gives it a much more cleaner and linear look. So going further down, you have your top button, which should be at or slightly above your waist. The bottom button lining up with the pocket right here. And then the rest of the coat is just the skirt. Now, this is very arbitrary. Some wear longer coats, some wear shorter coats. Um, I like longer coats. And the beauty of this coat from a design standpoint is that by placing this button here and having a longer coat, it gives you a long sweeping line. The skirt is just sort of a beautiful long swe sweeping skirt. And the longer the skirt, of course, the more you're able to see the overall shape of the jacket. When a jacket is cut very short, even when it's suppressed in the waist and you sort of get everything else right, you don't have enough room to travel to show the full shape of the garment. And so a longer jacket, what that does is that it gives you, it affords you the room to actually show the shape of the jacket. This sweeping skirt accentuates even further the suppression in the waist and that width in the shoulder and the bloom in the chest. So that is about it from the frontal in terms of design, sort of from the frontal view. Again, the shoulders, uh, the lapels, um, the chest, the waist, the, the positioning of the pockets, the length of the skirt. Um, one thing to mention is the uh, configuration or the button configuration of a double-breasted jacket. Now, you could have six buttons here, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, and it's called a six by two or a six by one. So if you have six buttons here and it's buttoned at the middle button or at the waist button, that's called a six by two. If it's buttoned, at the bottom button, that is called a six by one. Similarly, if it's a four button, if it's buttoned here, it's called a four by two. And if it's buttoned at the bottom, it's called a four by one. So one has to determine what the button configuration is going to be. Obviously, for taller people, they can carry six buttons. I typically recommend for shorter people or shorter men or individuals generally to go with the four button configuration such as I have because you don't want to make the jacket too busy. If you're shorter, you want to keep things a bit more simplified. You want to keep it a bit more simple. So you keep the button configuration in my view to just four buttons, either a four by two or Preferably, if you're shorter, you want to go with a 4 by one which buttons all the way down here at the bottom button. And again, as I said earlier in the presentation, it gives you sort of a longer sweeping lapel line, which serves to elongate the figure. So that's it from the uh, frontal uh, view from a design or sort of artistic standpoint. Um, the side is no different from a typical single-breasted jacket. You have your side body here, uh, or side panel. Uh, some build in an extra side panel here. These are all technical elements that we don't really have to get into um, since this, is, this conversation or this discourse is more about design. Uh, we don't have to get into the technicals. But uh, this is the side, which is just a very typical uh, construction. Uh, this is the way you might construct a single-breasted jacket as well. And the back as well. Um, there is no construction in the back. It's just a piece of cloth, really. Um, there is no canvas. There's no, uh, th there are no internal or sort of inners in it. It's just a piece of cloth. Uh, the only difference, of course, as with all our ASCO key coats, is that because this is a drip coat and because we emphasize comfort, uh, we like to cut a bit of extra room into the back, especially here, particularly here, right under the armhole. We like to cut a bit of room here, 
And what that does is that it just gives you that comfort. If I turn around, it gives you that comfort and it gives you room to move around. As with all our garments, comfort is paramount. Of course, style is important, but style without comfort is meaningless. And so we place comfort as a priority when designing our garment. And as such, here we've, we cut extra room into the top of the back, just right under the uh, sky or sky, I'm not sure exactly how it's said, but the armhole, uh, S-C-Y-E, that's a technical term. Uh, for an armhole. Right under this, the sky here, uh, we cut a bit of extra room just to give you uh, that room and that comfort uh, to be able to live in your coat. So that's about it uh, for from the design, uh, from a design, design and uh, construction standpoint. Well, construction is going to be very similar to a, a, a single-breasted coat or any other coat for that matter. You have your canvas, if it's fully canvassed, if the coat is fully canvassed, the, the canvas goes all the way, as you can see, this is a canvas on the lapel as well. It goes all the way from the top, all the way to the bottom of the coat. As with all our jackets, all our jackets are fully canvassed. And if you don't know what a canvas is, a canvas is just basically, this is horsehair. It's a, it's a material, uh, that gives the coat its shape. It allows the coat to sort of maintain its shape. Uh, cheap garments or cheap jackets are usually typically fused. Uh, a fusing is a black material that is used uh, in place of a canvas and it's just, it's, it's cheap, it's, uh, it's used for cheap garments. We don't even touch fusing. So this is a fully canvas garment all the way from top to the bottom. Here you can see the chest piece as well attached. It hasn't been fully basted, but you can see the chest piece here, which is another element of the garment that gives it that shape in the chest. Um, very typical of any coat, uh, nothing different from, let's say, a single-breasted jacket. So again, you can see the uh, internal construction here, fully canvassed, top to bottom, from the top all the way to the hem, fully canvassed, with a chest piece in it. Uh, the collar, likewise, is attached um, perfectly. The size of the collar, again, will have to be proportional to the width of the lapel. And so if you're going for a smaller lapel, of course, you want to adjust the size of the collar uh, to be consistent to ensure that flow from the lapel into the collar. Of course, the collar is nicely fitted. It should fit. It should be nicely fitted. It should hug your neck. Okay, and this is another critical fit element. Again, it's a technical element, and we're not talking about technicals today. We're talking about basically the artistic element of a coat. Uh, but in terms of technicals, you want the collar of the coat hugging your neck right about there. Um, and so that's about it uh, for the construction. Now, what should one look out for when buying, purchasing a double-breasted coat or having one made? Again, the key things I pointed out earlier are you have to sort of understand your own physique um, or your own idiosyncrasies. Are you tall? Are you short? Are you uh, a man with, are you uh, fully girthered? I don't want to use the word fat because it just sounds impolite. Uh, but are you sort of a large man um, or are you a short man and so on and so forth. All these things will determine your choices when picking uh, a double-breasted coat off the rack uh, or uh, having one made for you. Again, let me reiterate the key things, the two key things to look out for uh, based on your morphology are going to be the lapel and the button configuration. These are the two defining elements that can alter or that can sort of offer you a more flattering image uh, 
let's say when you have a less than optimal image as or, uh, optimal physique as we all do including your professor the lapel if you're taller you can afford to have it cut shorter and buttoning at the waist if you're shorter you certainly want a longer lapel line a long sweeping lapel line that buttons all the way at the button button the width of the lapel is going to be up to you but for taller gentlemen of course you can wear much wider lapel to sort of give you uh, that width or sort of to emphasize that width in your shoulders uh, if you're a shorter man you may not want a very punchy lapel you want to keep the lapel somewhat tame and long again remember the key here is you want to elongate your figure so you want to keep the lapel fairly slimmer but longer and so that ensure that gives you that long sweeping lapel line which elongates your figure the second thing to bear in mind again as i mentioned earlier would be the button configuration if you're taller you can go with a six by two which means six buttons one two three four five six you can go by with a six by two you can go by with a four button it's up to you i have on here a four button i'm just a hair short of six foot one so i might be considered tall uh, or a taller gentleman so i can wear a four by two just as well as i can wear a six by two uh, if you're shorter you want to stick to a four by two which is what i have on with a longer lapel line and the reason as i mentioned earlier in the presentation is that one the, it's less busy uh, six but or four buttons are less busy than six buttons so you want to keep things fairly simple and focus more on the cut uh, of the coat so that's about it um, the last thing of course would be the length of the coat if you're taller of course you could sort of wear a longer coat um, if you're shorter you can also wear a longer coat uh, it all comes down to proportion some people are shorter but have longer legs and so on and so forth so these are all things one has to uh, bear in mind when choosing or when having uh, a double reset code made for them. That brings us to the end of this presentation. Um, I think I've covered just about all uh, there is to be covered from an aesthetic standpoint. And uh, in another segment, we will probably go into some of the more technical nuances uh, of the construction of our Askoki double breasted coat. And so with that, I say thank you for joining us for yet another exciting segment of Askoki, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Do not forget to follow us on Instagram, on YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and of course our Discord community, which is growing by the day. Um, Like-minded aficionados, uh, come join up. Uh, it's an it's basically it's a user generated platform. So uh, you're going to meet a bunch of other a lot of other Asco key uh, 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 Family if I can call it that and you can exchange ideas freely. So that's about it uh, Thank you once again for joining and uh, goodbye <music>